Hey crafters, Lisa here from Fun Stuff Crafts. So glad you could join me again here today. If you're new to my channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below and click on the bell and it'll alert you each time I have a new video to upload. I've also got a great blog over at funstuffcrafts.com that will give you some more inspirational um, projects. I love doing Inspiration Friday projects. So what are we doing today? Well, today I have been getting a little bit of spring fever. I am ready for spring to come. I'm ready to get our camper out. And one of the things that I need for our camper is a doormat. So I thought, let's go ahead and make a doormat. So this is what we are gonna make today. I had so much fun putting it together. So a couple things we're gonna do on this project is we are going to upload a picture that I found out um, on the internet. We're gonna bring it into design space. Then we are going to use contact paper instead of vinyl to make a stencil. And then we are going to apply some paint and we are gonna have this great doormat. Now, one of the things with the doormat that I think is a really fun thing to do is wedding gifts, um, housewarming gifts, all kinds of different things you can do with these doormats. So give me a second, I'm gonna change my camera angle and we're gonna start right out in design space. Okay, let's get started in design space. So the first thing I want to do is I am going to go out to the internet and I am going to just type in um, welcome to our campsite. Sometimes I just like to put in a saying and see what other type of designs are out there. So I'm just in Google and I locate this welcome to my campsite. I really like the font in it. So really what I want to do is just grab a screenshot of the welcome to our campsite. So that's what I'm gonna do right here is just grab that part of the um, design and then it is gonna save to my computer and we are gonna hop right back over into design space and we are going to upload. So I'm gonna browse for my image here and I'm gonna bring it in to my desktop or to design space now, when I get into design space, I like to grab the complex. Um, we're only going to get that welcome to our campsite. So we're going to use the crop feature and just bring in that amount. I want to do other things with the rest of the design. So whenever you do this type of upload, you want to use the wand to bring in, um, I call it like that blue check look, um, and that helps with the cut lines. So now what I'm doing is just with the wand, I'm going through and I'm clicking in all of the larger areas and you can see that blue checked is behind. So I gotta grab that R. Now I'm gonna grab the eraser and I'm gonna get rid of that little gray arrow. And then when we hit next, it is going to ask us if we wanna do a print and cut or just a cut. I'm gonna save this as a cut file I can always change it to a print at a later date if I wanted to. So I'm gonna give it a name um, of camp sign and then it is now in my upload tray. I'm gonna click it and I am going to insert it into the project. So now I wanna size it so that I can um, see it. And then the next thing that we're gonna do is I wanna bring in an image and I was trying to decide if I wanted to do a campfire or a trailer, but we're gonna go ahead and bring in a trailer. So in the search feature, I just put in trailer and you can see Design Space has got so many different options, but I really like that first trailer. So we're gonna go ahead and import that in and we're just going to put it right underneath our, camp, our welcome to our campsite. So that looks really nice now. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in the Wheelanders. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in my text and I decide to put it all in capital letters. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and type that in and then I like to go up and find a font. Now when you're looking at a font for this type of a project, you want one that is a little bit thicker. Um, to do and so I find the I can't even say it um, Arabic font excuse me um, and now I just want to size it down 
and just we're just going to get everything aligned here. So what I like to do first is I'll grab the the um, campsite and I'm just going to click on that and then I'm going to hit my shift key and click on the trailer, go up to my align and I'm going to do that align horizontal. And then what I'm going to do is grab the Wee Lander and do the exact same thing. So now my project is all aligned. But as it is right now, we've got it in two colors, okay? And so I am going to go ahead and group everything together first. And then I'm going to use the color sync feature. And I'm just going to drag that brown up to the black. And you can see our whole project is now black. So now what we're going to do is we are going to really size it up to what the mat looks like. So I like to bring in a square box and my mat that we're going to be making is 16 inches by two feet. So we're going to go ahead and size this box. You need to unlock the lock. And so you can change the size to two feet wide by 16 inches in height. And this way we can really measure and make sure that our lettering will be appropriate on the mat. So I'm just going to go ahead and play with that a little bit and get it all centered exactly where we want it to be. And I'm just centering it just so I could get the feel, full look to it. Now we're not going to cut out that triangle, or excuse me, triangle, rectangle at all. But we're just using it for sizing, just to give us an idea. So I'm going to go ahead and hide it. And that way, when we go to print it, it is not going to show at all. So now we've brought it all over and we're on our mat. And we are going to go ahead and click on to continue. It's going to connect to my Cricut. And when it comes up there, I am going to go to the browse and I am actually going to use freezer paper as my material. You know, that's kind of a different material to use when you're using contact paper, but it cuts very nicely. So let's jump over and get our mat loaded. So we've sent our design over to our maker and now what we need to do is load our mat. So I like to use the blue mat when I'm doing a stenciling. And I also have done a couple different ways to do my stencil. I've used freezer paper. Um, this time what we're gonna use is I picked up just some contact paper um, at um, Walmart. And I am just gonna use that. I like to um, use it instead of vinyl just because, I mean, this is literally just gonna be thrown away. And so, by using the contact paper, it's a lot less expensive. So I'm just gonna cover my mat. I'm gonna trim it. I could have trimmed it beforehand, but I'm just gonna trim it here real quick. Um, and then we will get our mat loaded. And we're gonna let the Cricut do its cutting. And then I will join you back as soon as we have everything cut. One thing I do want to mention is we want to make sure that we get all of the bubbles out of the contact paper. So I just go ahead and make sure that I've got it furnished down very well. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and load it in the machine and let the machine do its work. I'm going to turn my machine sideways because I'm using my larger mat. Okay, so the mat's all done. We're going to go ahead and unload it. And what we're going to do now is we're going to get to weeding. Um, so what I like to do for the weed is normally I don't weed right on my mat. But in this case, we're going to. Um, and so let me grab my pen. And 
just like I always do, I weed with my pin pen that I got from 651 Vinyl. And I am just going to weed out all of these letters. And I'll tell you, using that freezer paper setting for the cut, this contact paper works so nice. And I literally found this setting totally by accident um, one day when I was doing going back and forth between contact paper and um, freezer paper and just found that it works so nice. So one of those little tricks that's always good to know. And so what we're going to do is I'm just going to continue to weed out all of my letters because remember we're making a stencil here. Um, and so I'm going to weed out all of my letters and then we are going to transfer it onto our mat. So I'm just going to go ahead and keep weeding um, and I will come right back to you when I've got it all done. Okay, so we've got it all totally weeded. And so now what I'm going to do is I am going to pull it off of my paper or my mat. And remember, this is where it was nice because I, it's cut through in a few places just a little bit, but just have to be really careful taking it off. Very slow. It hasn't cut all the way through the back. And so there we are. I always like to hang my mats up as soon as I'm done. And there we have got our transfer that is all ready to go on our mat. Now, I should have given myself a little bit more room here, but I am going to use painter's tape once we get it on to the mat um, just to protect myself. So. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the mat. Now this mat is one that I picked up at Ikea um, and it is a one, um, one foot four inches by two feet, so 16 by, by 24. And I did take, it sounds crazy, but I did take a lint roller and kind of lint, lint roll over it a little bit because there's a lot of these extra grasses all over the place. So what I like to do now is I am going to take the stencil off the back of the transfer tape and I like to kind of roll it evenly. So what we're gonna do is let's get an idea and this is one of the reasons why I like my big Cricut mat that I've got underneath is you can see I've got 24 inches on my mat and if I look down below, it's kind of hard to see with this blue line, that is my center, okay? So if I just want to eyeball my center here, I can do this and then I can just fold it. So I know right about my E is where my center is gonna be, okay? So you guys can kind of see that. Now when I take this off the transfer tape paper, um, you're gonna see the insides of these letters not come and we're gonna add those later, okay? So what I'm going to do is I am going to take this off the back. You can see how those are coming up and that's perfectly fine. Just making sure everything else is coming off. So pull it nice and easy. Those are the windows from my trailer that are still on there. Insides of some of my letters. So the inside of my P. Otherwise, so it's just the insides of my letters that are still on the paper. And we're going to put those back on. Dang it my camera again. We're going to put those on in just a minute, okay? Sorry, you guys. I decided to hit my camera there. Okay, so remember we said the E was a 
about where we're centered. I like to use my ruler here, so I'm two and a quarter and two, so I'm gonna come down a little bit on this side. can actually see me measuring but I'm measuring at the bottom and I'm right even so I can see now that I'm where I want to be and I'm just flipping up some of my little pieces now a little trick I've learned is if I use pins to keep some of those pieces in place, it really helps. And so, I actually like to do that just with my, I'm gonna add tape here in a minute, but I just wanna get this where we're all good where we're at. And I'm also going to use my pins to place these little pieces on. So like this is the A, in Wheelander. I'm gonna just lay that right there, but so it doesn't move when I start to do my painting. I'm just doing a pin, a pin there. Okay. You wanna get your pins all the way in. So I'm gonna add each one of my letters in for the inside. I'll add pins on each one of those. pins and then the key on the stenciling piece is you know you're gonna daub up and down um, and so you're not gonna go across and so that is the key to making this all work you really want to get the end the end of those letters okay let's see what else do we have we've got the center of the tire got the two windows for our trailer. Can't wait to go camping this year and have this out on my, out in front of my trailer. I'm just going to go ahead and get these laid in and then we'll pin each one of them. Oops. Couldn't get my fingers unstuck from it. I'm just going to go through and I'm going to pin these pieces in place and my mat's got that rubber on the back and so I'm really making sure that my pins go all the way down that way they're going to stay Okay, I've got most of it um, pinned now. So what I'm gonna do is just to be safe around the edges is I am going to add some painter's tape, especially on this side and then down on the bottom here, um, just to help um, protect um, me from getting, me from getting any paint on the mat. Gave myself lots of room over here, but 
kind of short change myself here. Okay, so now I'm just gonna be really carefully. I'm gonna grab my paint that I'm gonna be using. Now I like to use the outdoor paint. Okay, so I picked up some of this off of Amazon and I'll have the link down below. But one of the things that I've learned is um, if you can use just your basic um, um, acrylic paint, but when this is gonna be outside stepped on a lot, um, it's much better to use the black uh, or the uh, um, outdoor paint. So I would really recommend um, doing that. And I haven't used it before, so of course, doesn't wanna open up for me right away. I haven't used this one before. Got paint on my blade. Not a good thing, Lisa. Okay, this is being really ornery. Well, I can tell I should have opened this already. Okay, so. Okay, so to make this easier, I am going to pour a little bit of this paint into my little cup. And then there are two different brushes you can use for this. I picked these up, both of these up at Walmart. Um, and so this is one that a lot of times um, you see people using when they're doing stenciling. It's like a stub nose um, brush. And then this is just the um, foam um, one. And so I'm actually going to, um, I think I'm going to start out with the foam one and see. I haven't tried the foam one before. So let's see how it works. Um, you want to make sure that you don't have a ton of paint on um, when you're doing it. And... Remember, we're just going to go up and down. And I think I'm going to transfer over paintbrushes because that one doesn't seem like it's really getting a lot. Just up and down. Let me fill in there. You want to get a good coat of the black on. We're going to put a protective overlay over the top, but we definitely want the black to be dark. And we definitely can touch it up after we're done. I'm cheating here doing this camper first because it's such a big area. So I'm going to go ahead and just fast forward through this next part and just go through and remember it's um, up and down um, blotting on with the black paint as I finish this up. Now, one thing I realized after I was done filming is I forgot to film the spot where I am removing the contact paper. So you're going to see right here, I'm jumping right in. I've removed my contact paper. And now what I'm doing is I've got a smaller paintbrush and I am just filling in some of the extra areas just to get it a little bit blacker in places. So there's still a couple pieces of my contact paper there that I'll remove here in a minute, but I'm just going through and just really making sure that the black is very thick on here. So next thing we're gonna do once I finish this is we're gonna let this dry and then we're gonna take the mat outside and put a clear coat on.
So I'm going to go ahead and finish just filling in here, and then I will meet you outside. So the last step we're going to do is I have taken the mat outside. It's nice and dry and you can see where I finished some of it off and I am going to add this clear coat sealer to it. It will really help um, with the footsteps going on it. So I'm just going to give it a coat and I'm really just giving a good coat to where all the writing is. And then we're going to let it dry for 24 hours. And we have got a beautiful mat that's all ready for the outside of our camper. Thanks for joining me for another Inspiration Friday. I really hope you like this project with these doormats that we use Design Space. And we created a stencil and then we painted on our design. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. And don't forget to check out my blog at funstuffcrafts.com for other inspirational videos. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next Friday.